So The Great Gatsby. Uh, let's talk about this. First of all, I just want to say I wasn't ever, ever looking forward to this movie. Maybe when I first heard it was being developed, I was, but as soon as I saw that Baz Luhrmann was directing it, I lost complete interest. Baz Luhrmann did the movie adaptation in 1996 or 7 of Romeo and Juliet starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. And I consider that to be one of the biggest pieces of shit I've seen in a while. I thought it was absolutely awful. Whatever he was trying to do, trying to make that like a kind of modern day version to attract, you know, a new crowd, I didn't think worked at all. You know, it's one of the more unpleasant experiences I've had watching a movie. And so when I heard he, the director of not only Romeo and Juliet, but also Moulin Rouge, and having just the, the most overproduced, you know, just climactic, if for, you know, lack of a better word, guys, um, you know, directing style, I was absolutely horrified that they would choose him to direct The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby is a novel written in the 1920s by Elf Scott Fitzgerald, of course, um, that's, you know, about a lot of things, has a lot of, you know, in really intricate themes, and it's just really, really well written. And the thing about that is that the way it's done is, it, you know, it's really, really eerie, really mysterious, uh, really just really subtle. That's the that's the thing that I think made me love that book the most is that how really subtle it is. And if Baz Luhrmann is anything, it's just he's the antithesis of subtle. And just as a word to be the antonym of subtle, I mean, we should just get Baz Luhrmann as that word. Throw his middle name in there too. And, you know, the trailers weren't impressing me at all. It looked exactly how I thought it was when I heard Baz Luhrmann was going to do it. And it really didn't impress me at all. I liked it a little better than I thought I would. But, um, let's talk about it. So my main complaint about the movie is my complaint that I've had for about a year now. What Baz Luhrmann does for this movie is take The Great Gatsby and turn it into Moulin Rouge, which is kind of just sacrilege. One of the things that he does, he kind of does the same thing that Quentin Tarantino did with Django Unchained, how it take, took place, you know, a, a while ago, but they were using modern music. And, you know, Django Unchained did that far, far, far better than this one did. Um, I mean, I guess with its own style it kind of worked, but not with the setting. And, I mean, for instance, there's a scene, which was a really great scene in the book, a scene where, you know, the main character, Nick, played by Tobey Maguire in this movie, um, has this sexual encounter. And, you know, it's this, you know, they're having a party in this little, you know, in this little apartment, and the music that played is music you'd hear at, hear at like a nightclub. And what the hell? I mean, that really just took me out and kind of just, again, the, the same kind of thing Romeo and Julia did, it didn't really bring me into the story, it kind of just made me look at it in just awe. I mean, there are so many, you know, visual tricks he does, um, you know, it's overproduced to the max. Uh, so the whole thing you're kind of just watching, uh, and although it's kind of visually pleasing, um, you know, at some parts, uh, it gets really annoying, and there are, he takes out scenes. The thing about, you know, what he does with this, he takes out, like, you know, actually actual eventful scenes from the book and just replaces them, though, with just drawn-out scenes that really don't matter that much, so it's really just his over-stylized BS throughout the whole thing, and it's just lame. I don't know, it felt like it was went on forever. This is, like, 140 minutes, and it definitely felt like 140 minutes longer even like I, I mean it just it felt so long and one of the also things I did see this at a really really shitty movie theater but I did see and I also saw it in 3d the 3d for me really wasn't good at all it was way too dark and in fact I kind of wanted to take just take my glasses off and just leave them off because it was brighter without the glasses and I didn't really care about the 3d now this movie is saved from not being a really bad movie um, by having a really, really great cast, I think Leonardo DiCaprio and Joel Egerton are perfectly cast in their roles. Tobey Maguire is also really good. Carrie Mulligan is really good. Jason Clark and Isla Fisher are, also have uh, supporting roles in this. And the really only one I had problem with was uh, Isla Fisher. I mean, she just annoyed me. And the set design is really, really good. The mansion I is actually exactly, exactly how I pictured it. It's a, It has the exact same look, every single part of the mansion. But I mean, also, I mean, The Great Catsby has a lot of, a lot of symbolism. And I mean, they kind of use the same symbols in this, the same physical symbols, and they just kind of shove it in your face. I mean, the whole, um, you know, face thing it describes in the beginning, if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. It really just overdoes that, and it's just, it, it didn't work. So overall, I was not impressed at all. Um, you know, the, the cast and uh, some the cinematography, which was actually really good despite it being the wrong kind of cinematography for this, um, you know, adaptation, um, I think saved the movie from being really bad, so it was kind of just mediocre, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, those who are looking forward to it, I guess it's another summer disappointment, unless you did like it, of course. 
Um, but no, my opinion's right. But yeah, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. I'll see you guys later for the next review with Star Trek 2.